Good afternoon, good morning everybody. Um, I just wanted to create an update video. Um, this morning I had a lot of calls, emails, text messages from people wondering what's going on and, and uh, they received some letter in the mail about a recall of the entire board. And um, this video um, I'm going to uh, try to accomplish a couple things. But the objective is the objective here, <clears throat> excuse me, is going to be, <clears throat> geez, Luis, is going to be to provide you guys the facts of what's going on and then give you guys my opinion based on what I know. Okay. So, first is there's a current recall um, of a director, Michael Allen. Um, that recall was acknowledged by the board, um, our attorney, and um, we're obviously moving forward with that. Uh, make sure you have your votes in uh, on the 12th, so this month, if not sooner. So um, that's one recall, already in motion. Most of you know about that one. So then apparently something shows up in the mail. That was not authorized by the board. It wasn't authorized by the property management company, according to people I've spoken to, or our attorney. So what is it, right? Um, the, the premise for the second recall is a recall of the entire board okay um and i'm going to stop there because i want to make that clear if i didn't get it in the mail but if what i read or was sent to me is true that that recall is asking you to send your stuff to lord management okay lord management doesn't know anything about it they don't know why they're being tasked with that and uh, they certainly didn't send or promote any of this information okay those are facts I spoke to Lauren this morning. It's kind of my job. And uh, you guys are busy doing your jobs. And mine's to protect you and to inform you and what the board tasks me to do. Okay. So here's now I'm going to interject quite a bit of an opinion based on what I know. Um, first and foremost is, you know, having Michael Allen um, removed to the board, many of you know it's it's – it has to happen. Um, the reason why is because um, it's my firm belief based on knowledge from a, a, a judge um, and from our attorney and from my own uh, investigation understanding that uh, either Michael Allen and or Hal Siegel um, were giving information prior to mediation um, with GPL. And we know this for a fact. So would Mike Human, Dave DiNapoli, and Paul Brownlee do that? No, not in my opinion. Okay. And because they're on the side of the HOA, they're not on the side of GPL like the other two. And um, it wouldn't make sense for them to do it. Michael Allen fought really hard to be able to go to the mediation. In fact, just felt like he'd be there and he even went as far, I think, in an email to state that he would just sit on the sideline and listen. Now, he doesn't know anything about what we've been discussing as a legal committee. He's not on the legal committee. He wasn't on the legal executive committee. And he was all for one of the first things he tried to do was ban the legal committee. Okay. Now, he knew the directors didn't want him to show up. They called a special meeting and voted to ensure that he didn't. What was interesting was the, the judge who we were mediating with ADR services said, came in and he mentioned a bunch of things about a meeting that was less than, that convened less than 12 hours before. Well, I didn't know what the heck he was talking about. I mean, the board didn't come tell me. Um, and so I reached out to Mike Human and asked him, hey, was there a vote? Um, they're saying that there wasn't a vote. And I guess that morning there was already an email from one side to the other stating that there wasn't a vote held when the board um, said there was and confirmed with me, hey, you know, there was a vote. We voted. That was the whole point of the, that meeting the night before and that was that so that morning the judge says hey uh, Mr. Baroni's Mr. Levine thank you for showing up but uh, hey listen we really can't continue because um, 
the board didn't vote. Now, remember, I didn't know that anyone even th thought or knew if the board didn't vote, right? So I only knew that they did, and I only knew that um, that's why they had the meeting, and I only knew that uh, it was supposed to be as the board wanted, just myself, and specifically not Michael to show up because he was dying to be there. Well, we already kind of knew what his what his plan was there, so... Um, the judge then went ahead and confirmed things that were said in that meeting. Now, we never asked for that information. Ever. How would the judge know it? Well, the judge knew it because when David Smith and the attorneys that were in that room um, were talking to the judge, they specifically stated that I shouldn't be at that meeting, and the reason why was because there wasn't a vote. Well, how the hell did he even know there was a meeting? And how did he know that what Michael Allen had stated somewhere between that meeting ending and that mediation, that he was um, complaining about there not being a vote? How in the, I didn't even know that. How would the judge know? And he knew because he was told by them. So here's your evidence in court, if any of you are brave enough to bring this in there and saying I'm lying. Here's your evidence. Um, I've got the judge's name, and um, I'm allowed to tell you that's what was going on. That's one of the first things he said to us was, you know, things in there, we just can't lie about what, what happened, but we can discuss what happened, okay? And that's what I'm telling you. So you have this video as proof if you think I'm lying. Take it to court and find out, okay? That being said, um, we had already kind of known what was going on with Michael suing the board, doing some other things. <clears throat> but that leads me to, um, I, I give that to you as a preface for what, what's going to happen and being said next. So one of the many reasons not to have him on the board, um, many, many more too, by the way, legal and otherwise. So, uh, the next thing is, is that there's this letter that comes out. Apparently people get it in the mail and it's calling for an entire recall of the board. Well, <clears throat> I don't have any issues with there being a recall of the board. I'm not on it. Um, it appears, at least from what I was able to hear and see, that it was legitimate. There was enough signatures. Um, didn't look like any forgery like the ones that, you know, David Smith tried to work up. And, uh, you know, any, uh, apparently, at least thus far, it didn't seem like there's any undue influence in, in any of these. So um, the problem is what's happening is, in this letter, apparently, um, it's stating that you got to send your stuff to Lord Management. Well, they don't know anything about it. I've already talked to them this morning, and uh, they don't know anything about it. At least Shelby doesn't, and I uh, haven't heard back from Donnelly. But um, discussions uh, on the matter have been had in the past, and you know the process was was made clear to everybody that once in, in our meeting too, the monthly meeting, once the uh, determination was made on the Michael Allen recall. Um, and we got confirmation of it, we would then begin the process of starting the next recall, right? And the reason for that is because one, that's what a legal attorney has advised us to do, and uh, it's probably a smart thing to do. And two, it would also tell you the dynamic of the board before you recall it. Um, so for instance, if Michael Allen got recalled and um, Steve Maturo got put on the ballot, you'd be recalling a board in its entirety and you didn't even know who one of the members was, of one of the directors, I should say. So that may influence you. Let's say you just know Steve, or let's say you just like Steve so much that you really don't care about who else is on there. You just want Steve to be on there. You're probably less likely to vote for a full board recall if you're happy that Steve's on the board, right? We have to at least allow someone that opportunity. We can't, you know, hem people up and do, uh, you know, what it is the other side wants, right? We just have to not take a side and do it right. So that being said, um, we wait for the outcome and then we would proceed with a full board. But at least you guys would know that ahead of time. So right now you've got information that there's a full board recall, but you don't even know the composition of the board. 
Um, and that's why it would be done. It's just logical, um, makes sense, it's clean, it's easy, okay? Uh, but that's not what, um, that's not what the GPL supporters want. And they know that, hey, listen, if we get tied into being GPL supporters, our goose is cooked. Nobody, even themselves, would want that to be attached to their you know, resume or to their list of reasons of what they're doing. So then why circumvent the board to come out with this letter that they did and try to call for people's um, bios to run for the board? I mean, we just did this literally not even a couple weeks ago and, uh, you know, doing it again, right? Well, the reason is this, and I mentioned this into an, in another video, is GPL has pretty much not complied with, with the court and the depositions and, and hasn't done a lot of things um, that are required before December. And they didn't file 15 motions or how many ever it was because they felt like they're going to be very successful in the trial. In fact, when you file that many motions and you try to get terminating sanctions and all these cute little things that go along with it, you do it because you know you can't win. It's you're fighting the best you can so that you can't win. And you're trying to do, in, entice the court or compel the court to, to drop the case or to um, do whatever um, GPL wants in this case. And then handle it from there. So keep this in mind this is we're defendants in this not plaintiffs so why is it then that they're trying to get all of this and push this aside not waiting for the proper process which our HOA attorneys advised the reason is actually pretty simple um, they want to get this done like by December 14th because those behind it um, are going to forge ballots okay um, they're going to lie, cheat, and steal, kind of like what happened before, and the court decided along well, on our side that no, you can't do that. Um, and they're gonna try to get all of that out there and pretend that they got as many votes as you know needed to win. Um, so they can go back to their, you know, their their owner and GPL and say, hey, listen. Since we can't beat you in court, and this is because he's prompting them, of course, to do all this, um, we did what you asked. And some of you are like, well, what's that? Well, we replaced the board. And that board is full of GPL lackeys, puppets. And they're going to want to settle with you, right? Because that's what Michael Allen wants to do. That's what even Harry Cohen has said she wanted to do. Um, they want to settle with GPL. Now, those of you new probably didn't realize there was a website and email created with all of that by David Smith and his acolytes to, to get that done. Well, why would a guy who brings a, a, a lawsuit against us all of a sudden want to settle? Wait, you're the plaintiff. It's us that should be saying we want to settle. Well, as is normally the case, they're at least one step behind. Um, he filed the lawsuit. He knows he's going to lose. He's not doing a lot of things the court is saying because his goal is, um, and I had this brief conversation with somebody this morning, and uh, that person was right. His goal is, well, he can drop the lawsuit just as soon as he knows the majority of the board are his supporters, right? And then they would immediately go into settlement mode. And what settlement mode looks like, from my perspective, is the what 16 million that were owed um the millions in the reserve the lack of capital improvements all of that money that we would um get back because he's going to lose as you guys all know um would be taken from us and more than likely my guess is they would put together a prize um, for the people who would get on the board to display to the HOA and say, look, HOA, this new board, in just a couple months, we were able to settle all of these lawsuits. All of them. Look how bad they are. 15 million here and millions there and, 
and we're we're your saviors okay we were able just to pay him $150,000 out of our reserve which leaves us with you know with plus what's in our uh, operating account 100,000 we're good we just get to start new but listen don't worry about that 150 I took out of the reserve account still got like 75 left plus you know 75 got 150 we're good we know what it takes to run but we've gotten rid of all these lawsuits and whew, thank goodness right because that's where it's going to go um and that's what they're trying to do um, many of you have asked well why is it that they're doing what they're doing well they're in part well they're in large part your answer so um the most important thing is to let people know that that's what's going on um, when for 25 years, as many people as that were involved in the fleecing of your association are there, um, we expect obviously there to be a lot of pushback. And, uh, you know, with Michael Allen's uh, land deal that he didn't pay money for, but was given land for, um, and what else don't we know? Probably a lot. The guy that has all the documents and keeps everything won't even give them to us. Well, why is that? How did he get on the board without telling people that? Did he tell all of you he was going to file three or four lawsuits against the HOA when he got onto the board? Do you think that there's a conflict of interest with a director um, filing lawsuits against the board? Davis Sterling does, and Davis Sterling is the, is the pretty much pinnacle of HOA knowledge. <laughs> they certainly do. So what is it that his supporters really, really want? What are they doing? Well, they're not looking out for you. And my guess is they don't want some things uncovered. In fact, I know that's what it is, and so do they. Uh, not all of them. Some people are just, you know, latching onto a cause. But that's where we're at. So um, as far as the, the entire board recall, the, the one that, that you guys have there is one... Um, that, uh, so this is kind of like the ending segment. So, uh, let me tell you kind of the process, um, that I taught the, you know, people trying to do it now, um, illegally process is, is should a board or should an association, um, send in a recall and it n not go the way they wanted or the board not accept it or whatever amount of lies that they might want to tell you. But in reality, if a board wasn't to accept it, which isn't the case here, um, and weren't to give out a date and whatever else, um, in ideal circumstances, they have to do that. Obviously, because there's another um, recall, they can't because they've got to figure out what's going to happen there, then set the recall, then set the date, and to give you guys an opportunity from that point moving forward to decide if you want to run. Because, like I said, if Steve or whomever else gets on, then some people are going to be like, well, then cool, I don't need to run. I, that's a guy I trust can do that well you can't do that right now because we don't know we're gonna to wait to the end to get it done so the 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 way the civil code reads and the way that you do it is you can call your own meeting as an association and you can go about the recall which I fully support and think is an absolutely valuable tool conduct your own recall you got to pay for it on your own you got to send everything out on your own and get your recall going and you'll have to get your own election of inspectors and you know, and do all of these things, then try to get it legit, and then um, implement the coup d'etat. In this case, the coup d'etat. And in a normal circumstances, um, it could be considered the same, but it would be very advantageous because, you know, let's say you had three rogue directors and, and uh, they were just running roughshod over the HOA and money was getting um, fleeced for 25 years and uh, you wanted to get them out to get like, you know, new board members in and within 10 months get 215,000 into the operating account, make the club look better than it ever has, have a bar open 12 hours a day, seven days a week, have a golf course that looks better than it ever has, to have a pool that's normally closed September 1st, open throughout the year, and to get aeration and uh, a cleaner lake with new aeration and tubing. Um, and let's say you just, you know, wanted to have an operating account um, that has, uh, as opposed to 20,000, maybe 80,000 in it or 50,000 in it, okay? That would be a great reason why you would conduct uh, that type of a, a association um, 
type of recall where the association is now taking over for the board, so to speak. But what I just explained to you, and this is very easy to understand, logically speaking, is the exact opposite. Right, the, the, the analogy that all of you probably already know at this point was what you would do if in the case you had a rogue board. But what actually is being done is all of those things that that new board and the CEO have done are what the other people are trying to recall. And of those people, Michael Allen, Hal Siegel, Yvette Touquet, um, Mary Wood, Jan Weber, um, Rick Bandini, Kathy Johnson, um, Jeff Herring, Andrea Jackson, uh, and more, okay? All of those people, that's what they want. They want to replace the, the individuals. Now, outside of the absurdity of two of the people I mentioned being Michael Allen and Hal Siegel actually being directors recalling themselves um, or having you know their family or friends do it for them, um, it's hysterical, right? I mean, it's, it's a joke. I mean, Michael Allen was going around talking to people about this and, and supporting it, and we know people that have told us that. So um, he's supporting his own recall um, but then asking for you in this recall to vote for him if they vote yes on the recall. Totally illogical, confusing for those that think logically, but if you go beyond this, the, the scope of what it looks like and to actually what it is, you realize this is as clear as day. This is a simple coup d'etat of a couple members, the ones that I just mentioned, um, supporting this action for reasons that we know by the way, not all of these people are uh, doing it because there's some compensation in for them. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is that some of those people have received compensation, like Michael Allen, in the form of land. Okay. So he probably has a vested interest in ensuring that uh, David Smith gets his way. And there's probably things we don't know. Okay. Probably. So therein lies what's going on um you guys hopefully will let people know um let your neighbors know of the the coup d'etat the heist that's being done by and uh, promoted by the people i mentioned and um what's important to understand here is again i'm just gonna you know there was a lot of opinion i'm gonna go back into just a fact mode again the fact mode is this um when we had uh Brian uh, Bandini working for us. Um, as many of you know, every meeting I would you know, praise them and give them accolades for all the things that they had done um, and still appreciate to this day. And it was awesome. I mean, it was a great time. And when we originally wanted Rick to come work on our golf course, Rick Bandini, or Rick Johnson, whatever, um, he really and truly, um, that was who I wanted to go because I knew he had some golf course experience and we had talked in the past about you know, that idea, but I knew he was busy. So he said, you know what, listen, I can't do it, but I've got my grandson who can. And I was like, great, you know, a great recommendation from, from none other than a homeowner in the area. And, you know, that's what we're trying to do and still are and will is promote from within and, and, and help us invigorate the HOA from within. Because that's how this is going to get done. It's not going to get done by... Look around you. I've seen the property management companies or golf course management companies... Um, Unless we're, we, we inherit some huge sum of money, um, it's all a short-term proposition for that company to do what they need to do to make a good living. And I'm not opposed to it. I'm just saying it's not best for us. Okay, so Brian comes in, does a great job. First three months, give him a bonus. And, uh, and uh, the other workers give him a bonus. Everything was good, you know, great work. Then comes the... Um, the request for stuff and so as I always do as the workers will, will tell you that are there now and, and good guys is I always ask them what do you need from me you know to be more efficient so Brian said hey I need this piece of equipment that piece of equipment this piece of equipment and that would really help us out we could run this place you know three to four guys so I was like okay great so I go ahead and uh, do all the analysis and research and figure out what it's gonna take and man it's it's like 80,000 something like that for everything and uh, 
we go and start purchasing that equipment. Now, somewhere between the time that we get that equipment and the time that the equipment goes, um, things happen, I'm not gonna get into, but Brian um, decides that he doesn't wanna work for DHOA, which is it's an at-will state here. Obviously, um, sucked to see him go. I was looking forward to him coming back. Um, was in some communication with him before, and uh, you know, thought, you know, hey, listen, we've got all that equipment he'd asked for. Um, I'd like to go over it with you and, and uh, you know, see how efficient we can become. Well, somewhere between that point and his resignation came Michael Allen and Hal Siegel. And what they had done is they reached out to Brian. Um, and Brian reached out to them. However, it works, you know, they were in communication. I guess that's a better way to say it. And whatever happened happened to the benefit of somebody who doesn't want this place to do well, right? And that would be, you know, having a guy that was, you know, helping run the golf course, managing it, and, you know, hiring people and things of that nature, not come back and work for us. So why am I bringing this up? Because Rick Bandini, or Rick Johnson, goes around telling people all kinds of lies, right? And Rick, you have this video, bring it to court with you, okay? But you don't have the stones to, to do that because you know you'll get shellacked in a courtroom. And the reason why you'd get shellacked is because you're lying. You then put out a claim as the resignation came in and claimed that there was some agreement, which of course you have nothing, not an email, not a text, nothing that identifies any agreement to lease, rent, or anything um, for the equipment. In fact, when he was here at my house, and so was the board, um, one of the things, and, and if Hal has any integrity, um, would have admitted is one of the things that they offered to bring along with them was the equipment. And that was great. That was a big reason why we hired Brian. I mean, his experience was, was limited in that capacity that we were hiring him for, but with, you know, Rick's recommendation and with the equipment and with the speed and, and expedience for which we could get things rolling, that's why we hired him. But nobody ever signed, agreed, verbally, non-verbally, written, or anything about the equipment. So what happens is then Rick, once his grandson resigns, sends some letter and has him and Kathy Johnson complain to everybody about the equipment that we're supposed to pay for. And then he has, you know, the puppets, you know, the Harry Cohens and a few others that are out there, uh, Big Low and a few others, they're out there now promoting this idea that somehow there was an agreement there. Um, and of course there wasn't. And he's never produced it. He just sent a list of $10,000 worth of stuff he thinks he's owed. And um, we've responded and of course he hasn't responded back. So um, the, the reason is, because that's who's going out to get signatures. Now he's telling people that we owe him money. He's getting up standing in meetings saying, how do we remove the CEO? Um, and he's real fired up and he's mad because more than likely someone's been feeding him bad information. And somewhere along the line, he felt that that was good enough to become a liar. And Rick Johnson, Rick Bandini is a liar and he's lying to all of you. Um, whether he hoodwinked his wife into this, that's their business. But since she's become a part of it, only reason why, because she's become a part of it, um, she's mentioned. Ideally, you know, leaving family that has nothing to do with it out um, is pretty much uh, what protocol and what manners teach you. So, that being said, then you have, you know, Michael Allen who's promoting this, right? And we already went on him. Then you have Harriet Cohen who is going out and promoting this and sending out, you know, emails and statements and stuff like that for which, you know, she has clearly um, no idea the liability that she's inheriting or she does and it's worth it for whatever reason, monetarily or ideologically it is to her, okay? And normally when someone has a restraining order against you, you don't want to like, go use their name or or say things about them, especially when the restraining order in and of itself is for you to stop harassing me, 
which is what she's been doing, obviously, through uh, all types of different communication channels. Um, so that's one of the other ones. Then you have uh, a realtor named Jeff Herring. Now, um, don't know much about him. He's been, you know, absent for a while, but apparently he's friends with, or close friends with, apparently uh, Michael Allen, and he becomes involved in promoting and trying to get signatures. Um, and to be clear, uh, from what Harry Cohen said on YouTube, and what later Jeff admitted to at an HOA meeting was he put out a video on YouTube, similar like this one, that just demeans and defaces or the HOA, the property, and much of what he's trying to do is to, de to devalue our property. Intentional or unintentional? Obviously it's intentional because you don't put out a, a disparaging video about your own property with the intent to increase value, okay? Or, or you, I'm not gonna, Put in a defense for them but there, there there could be some very oddball reasons why someone would anyways we're not buying it okay sorry um the bottom line here though is he puts out this video of how bad the course is and he's currently selling a house or is the broker realtor both for a gentleman who he represents that lives on the golf course now jeff knows that that's an ethical violation i mean of course he does he doesn't care. He leaves the video up. And it won't matter now anyway because, you know, obviously, I think when people contact, uh, you know, the, the company that he works for and shows them this, they probably would like to see it. And they'd like to know, hey, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you compromising what this company stands for and violating our uh, ethics that we have for our, our employees, right? And Jeff's another one that wants to do the recall and went and wants the CEO fired. Um, he's another one that was collecting signatures. And then there's Tom Allen, right? Now, Tom Allen, uh, I guess, lives next door to, to um, Michael Allen. There's no relationship there, just different spelling of their last names. But Tom actually is a guy who is um, going to try to help Marco Gonzalez in his case for $15 million against me and or the H HOA for doing what he did, right? You guys have seen the video if you haven't. Um, the reason why it's there is because we had to spell a lot of rumors that were being said about what happened. And uh, obviously the video, you know, is vindication for, for the HOA and myself, so. Um, but he he's now gonna be a witness and say that in an email, I said something that was whatever, um, however he took it, which, come on, Tom. You're better than that. You know, it's so silly. And he, the reason why they won't show it, and by the way, I will, um, is because it makes him look silly, right? There's nothing private about it. It was sent to him. He's sent it out. He gave it to people in a meeting. It's my email. I'll be more than happy to give it and show it to you. In fact, maybe I'll do that um, at the end of this video. So anyway, um, the he's out there, and he's promoting this entire project too. And... Clearly, he has some incentives to do so. Now, listen, if there was something that they didn't like about what we were doing, you know, as far as how we um, kicked out GPL, it's odd that all of these people were supporters of us prior to, right? But now that the dirty work's done, they want to come in and they want to try to, you know, try to run the show or, or do whatever. And it's a very dangerous game because you've got three volunteer directors who at any minute, Right, and this is kind of what they're hoping, right? Um, could say, you know what, we're done. And there would be jubilation on one side of this entire equation, and that would be those people that I, I, I uh, had just mentioned. Now, none of them decided to run for this uh, individual recall um, because you can simply just vote no on the recall, and that, in essence, keeps Michael on the board. But in order to confuse you, he tells you vote... Um, you know, vote no on the recall, but vote for me if you vote no on the recall. Well, the recall is just you, right? So the idea is that somehow he would believe that there would be a, <laughs> this is this is where logic really is strikingly missing. Um, if you were to not even be able to garner enough votes to stop the recall, 
what in the world would make you believe that you would have enough votes of saying yes on your recall that you would then get enough votes to be the one selected out of the slate of three, which realistically you shouldn't even be on. I mean, I guess legally you can be, but it's kind of silly. You just get to know. Long story short there is, then why support another recall of yourself? Why? Because what you guys need to understand is the determination, how wrought with bad things a 25-year empire uh, cartel and the people involved. Do you really believe, you know, that it's all just random stuff that's happening? Of course you don't. Um, the end result of this is, as your CEO, as a homeowner and member um, and advisor, I have no choice but to tell you guys these things because if apathy reigns supreme, then those just willing to do enough and in this case, bad things will 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 win. Now, with enough good-minded, good heart people that understand facts and logic, that won't happen. But I still owe it to you to tell you about it. Okay. Um, so the second recall uh, is garbage. Um, it's one that they're trying to do. Actually, it's a way that I would promote under the circumstance I, I had mentioned earlier. And um, but this one they can't do. Lorden. I don't know what they're going to do with all the ballots, but the board will have to make a decision on what to do with those because you'd be wasting your time. Um, Lorden works for the for the HOA and for the quorum of directors, the board, um, and they, like me, have to do what the board says. So uh, the board will base their decisions based off legal opinion. And um, here you go. Here's the video. Uh, make up your mind. You know, if you guys want to comment, you know, below, feel free. Um, and if you want to like it or subscribe to the channel, great. Um, but I intend to continue to um, press forward in the defense of the 459 homes of which I would say probably 400 if they knew what were going on it would, would or more would support what we're doing and uh, I think the budget I think their bank accounts I think when you take a look around it's pretty clear you know a lot of the great things that are going on and it's also very clear that the reason why they're happening is because enough good people cared. And uh, I think with this video, we'll get even more. So feel free to reach out. You guys have a great one. And uh, I'll always keep it real with you and appreciate your guys' support. Thank you so much.